Welcome. In this video, I introduce what differential calculus is using a colorful visual analogy. Let's start by talking about what calculus is. Well, calculus is the mathematical study of continuous change. It has two main branches. That first branch is differential calculus, which is the focus of this calculus one subject that we are undertaking currently. And then the other branch is integral calculus, which is one of the focuses of the calculus two subject that follows the one we're currently tackling. So I'm going to go into examples explaining uh, what differential calculus is. And then after that, we'll talk about what integral calculus is. And this will give you a clear sense through those analogies as to how calculus is the study of continuous change. So let's start off with differential calculus. We can define what differential calculus is as the study of rates of change. Let's look at an example here where we are considering a vehicle traveling some distance d, say in kilometers, over time t, say in minutes. So you're starting here at home, not having traveled any distance at that uh, zero time point. At around the five minute mark, you begin to slow down and you stop at the shop down the street from you. You buy some snacks for the trip that you have coming up ahead. Then after being at the shop for about five minutes, you get back in the car and the vehicle starts moving again. So the brown line is just the vehicle. When you're in the shop moving around, nothing changes uh, on our chart. And yeah, so after you've grabbed your snacks, then you get back in the car, you start the car moving again, you accelerate onto an on-ramp, and then uh, for this part of the curve here, you're in cruise control on the freeway, going at a continuous speed, at the same speed. All right, so at the beginning of your journey, when you are starting away from home and going towards the shop, we have this period of initial acceleration away from origin at uh, distance zero. And so in this initial acceleration period, we can see that the curve is gradually increasing in steepness. So if we picked a particular point on that curve, say this point here, at this point, if we were to draw a straight line that matches the slope of the curve at that point, we call that a tangent line. And this tangent tells us the slope here. And if we go to a later part in the curve, we get a steeper slope. And again, if we go to an even later part of the curve here. So the tangent, the slope of our curve is increasing in steepness. And this corresponds to that initial acceleration of how much distance we're covering over time increasing. When we're at the store and our vehicle is stationary, as we walk around inside deciding on what flavor of potato chips to buy or whatever, the vehicle is completely stationary, meaning that uh, it is not traveling any distance over time. And so the slope is zero because we have zero distance being traveled in our numerator divided by time. Slope is equal to zero here. And then finally, after you've left the store and have gotten back on the highway, when you're on the highway and traveling at a constant speed because you're in cruise control, if we pick any point, once you have cruise control on, the slope is always the same because you're traveling at a constant speed. All right, so here's one chart that brings together our whole journey. So we have this initial acceleration away from the vehicle's origin where the slope is gradually increasing. We have this part of the journey where the vehicle is stationary. And then we have the freeway part of the journey where we're in cruise control and the vehicle is traveling at a constant speed. So these tangent lines that I've drawn, those slopes are what we can determine using differential calculus. So the derivative that we find using differential calculus is the slope of the line 
at these, say, five points that I selected here. So you can calculate the slope of the line, the derivative, at any point along the curve, these five particular snapshots that we've been talking about so far. It's a common convention to denote slope as m. So slope of a line, very common to use m to identify uh, what slope is. And so I'm making these numbers up here, but as we're accelerating in that initial period, we have a slope here of half. And then as we are moving more quickly at that later point, I have a slope of equal to one. So distance over time is equal to one, meaning we're traveling one unit of distance for every unit of time that passes. Whereas at that earlier point, we're only traveling half a distance unit for every minute of time that passes. Then at this later point here, where we have already accelerated and we're moving quite quickly, this is say a slope of equal to two where we're traveling two units of distance for every unit of time that passes. While we're at the shop, our slope is equal to zero, of course. No distance is being traveled for every unit of time. And then here on the freeway, at any given point along this curve, we have a slope of one, meaning that we're traveling one unit of distance per unit of time. And I do notice that there's something funny here where on our way to the shop, there's one point where we're going very quickly. <laughs> Let's just say that I'm an erratic driver. <laughs> Okay, so taking that chart that we just saw, making it smaller so that I can show you another chart over here now, I'd also like to note here that this slope m that we've been talking about in this particular case where it corresponds to a change in distance over a change in time, we can also call that speed, which I'll use the variable s and the color blue to represent in this next chart. So we can take the derivative, we can calculate the slope using differential calculus at all the points along this curve, allowing us to know what the vehicle's speed is at every point along the curve. And then we can plot that speed separately. So we have the same time happening over the bottom, so from zero to about 15 minutes passing. And this second chart is showing the same journey as we had over here, but instead of showing the distance that we're traveling over time, I'm showing what speed we were moving at at any particular time point. And so the slopes on this chart here of distance over time correspond exactly to these points of speed over time. So at the beginning of our journey, where we're going at uh, half a unit of distance per unit of time, that corresponds to speed of half a kilometer per minute. And then at this second point here, where our slope is equal to one, that corresponds to a speed s of one. So we are, have now reached the one kilometer per minute mark here. And at this third time point where slope is equal to two, our speed is equal to two. The slope is speed. Slope on this chart is equal to speed on this chart. And so we hit that two kilometer per minute point here. Then in this point of the curve here where we decelerate to stop at the store, that's captured here with our speed decelerating toward zero. And then for any of the moments that we are in the store shopping around and our vehicle is stationary out front, the slope is equal to zero, speed is equal to zero, and we can denote that as speed being equal to zero here. And then here, after we've gone back to our car and we accelerate onto the on-ramp, that's captured by this increase in speed here. And then finally, when we're on the freeway, at a slope of one, which is also a speed of one, we see that here. All right, now let's take this differential calculus up a notch. So taking our speed chart, the right-hand chart from the preceding slide, we can again use 
differential calculus to calculate derivatives and identify the slope of that speed curve at any point. So it's just like distance over time was a curve that we could calculate derivatives of. We can do the same thing with speed over time. And so here we're seeing that we have a slope of one. Again, I'm making up these slopes, but <laughs> so we have a slope of one around here. And then we have a slope of two at this later point. This corresponds to faster acceleration at this point of the curve relative to here. And likewise, the negative slope of speed over time corresponds to deceleration, where the vehicle is slowing down. At this point here, where slope is equal to zero, this corresponds to a period where there is no change in acceleration. At this point here, we again have a period of acceleration, a period of faster acceleration, and then here's a period of deceleration, a point of deceleration. And then finally, when we're on the expressway in cruise control, we're also not having any change in acceleration there either. So we're moving at a constant speed when we're in cruise control. So interestingly, even though our speed is faster here, obviously than when we're standing still, our acceleration is the same because there's no change in speed. So this slope M in this case, on this second curve that we're looking at, this speed over time curve, that's the slope M now corresponds to a change in speed over a change in time, which as I've been calling is acceleration. And so distance we were measuring in kilometers, speed is in kilometers per minute, and then acceleration is in kilometers per minute per minute. This gives us a sense of how our speed is changing over time. Nice, so you could keep going from here. <laughs> uh, you could plot out your acceleration over time and then you could take even a third derivative, but uh, that's not so common in machine learning. In machine learning, at least, with any of the applications that we will be talking about in this Machine Learning Foundations curriculum, we won't be talking about going beyond the second derivative. So I will just leave it here. And it also, hopefully this has already been enough to illustrate the point that, that you can calculate derivatives with differential calculus multiple times on the same original data. Okay, so hopefully that has now given you a good sense of what differential calculus is. So we're calling that a calculus is the mathematical study of continuous change. Hopefully that our understanding of what that means. So, you know, we have these charts of the vehicle moving over time. We're looking at how speed is changing over time. We have this continuous change and we're able to use differential calculus to study how the rates of change are changing. So that's differential calculus. And in the next video, I'll introduce what the integral branch of calculus is.